Hello, everybody, and welcome to Red Bud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan, for round number six of the AMA motocross season. Both the 125s and 250s to entertain us today. Art Ekman along with David Bailey and Davey Coombs to bring you the action. The 125 riders are down near the gate right now. You see Casey Johnson there surveying his starting area. John Dowd leading by a single point over Ricky Carmichael in this 125 points race. And of course, Mike Brown really helped things out last week. Well, the last round, he finished between Carmichael. There he is right there. You can see the concentration. It shoved Dowd back a spot in each moto, so it helped Carmichael gain all those points back he lost in Southwick. Carmichael, uh, with a 15-point advantage going into Southwick, came out of it down by 13 points. And here you see the main reason, the mechanical in the first moto at Southwick. Praying that his engine would start, it never did. No points for a 28th place finish, but he came back for a second place in the second moto and then swept Butts Creek, only one point down. Number nine, John Dowd, after three consecutive second place finishes, took advantage there at Southwick with two hole shots leading every lap in both motos. Let's go down to the gate now and Davey Combs. Thanks, guys. This is it. We're going to the first moto. Carmichael's one point behind Dowd. So get ready to start here at Red Bull. Let's go over and have a word with Rick real quick. Rick, your point down. What's the strategy in the first moto? Uh, I think a good start's a strategy. Uh, I'm not too worried about the points right now. Like I told you earlier, it's just uh, trying to, to maintain a, 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 you know, a consistent finish. And uh, I think I won't have a problem if I, you know, do what I've been doing all this year and all last year. So we'll have to see. What about John? You won here last year on 250. You think it can carry it over on the 125? Uh, I don't know. I felt pretty good out here. I, I like this track. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I think uh, I'm just I'm just hoping to get a good start and you know get out there and try not to make uh, any mistakes. I mean, I think that's going to be the key to the, to the race today. So, uh, good luck today. Thanks. John Dowd, who uh, several years ago this was one of his worst tracks, but last year winning it on a 250. Now in the 125 competition, number nine and number one, the big points rush is on. Johnny O'Mara one of the great champions of all time. Patting it down for Carmichael as we take a look at the Suzuki track map. Well, Art, it's the same layout as we've seen the past couple of years. The difference is today they've put a lot of water down, so the first couple of laps will be a little bit muddy. Real interesting for the guys who don't get a good start because you're already covered with mud and your vision is gone, especially the first corner that's plowed real deep, so you may see some problems there. So with the dampness, it might be a little bit more one line than usual. It is a fast track normally with good passing lines. Jimmy Button just to the right of John Dow. Let's see who gets the whole shot. Pro Circuit teammate of uh, RC's Casey Johnson getting an outstanding start once again. RC is right there. Michael Brown, Curry, and Parolio, and we've got a smash up in the first turn. That's Robbie Horton, number 68, picking his bike up. Deegan's behind him, and Stefan Roncata, Honda of Troy, off to the left. He never has any luck first couple laps of the race. Look at this duel, side by side off the ski jump. Ricky Carmichael simply out jumping his teammate Casey Johnson, David. And wide open all the way down that straightaway. The fastest section on this entire course, which leads right into some of the switchbacks. And that's where it starts to get one line. The one line section you talked about are gonna happen all through the tight corners while that mud gets pushed to the outside. Carmichael with three overall wins in the previous five events, leaving nothing to chance, getting into the lead right now as Davey Combs is over with his mechanic, Chad Watts. Chad, before the race, Ricky said he really wasn't thinking about that one point. But it looks like he's giving it 100%. Do you think that deep in his mind, he was thinking, hey, I can get the points lead right now? It's too early in the season to worry about a point, much less one point. Um, as long as he rides his race, and don't worry about the championship and goes moto by moto, race by race. If it's gonna come, it'll come to us. Are you gonna tell him where Dowd is throughout the day? Nope, I wanna just tell him how far distance he has between seconds and his lap times and uh, just race the track. David Bailey, he forces himself to ignore that points race. Uh, he's in first place right now. John Dowd back in fourth place, just got around Sean Perolio. Well, you can bet that RC knows exactly what's happening with the points and it's on his mind, but the strategy that he's gonna focus on and to get us to believe is that he's not worried about it. Taking the outside course around those wet puddles where it's been watered down. Yeah, this, this place is notorious for water in the track, a little bit too much in practice. 
good thing, guys. Uh, they say practice is now open and no one goes out. No one wants to go out and ride through all that stuff. You can see right there, this is getting it all sideways. But after he gets through the first lap, though, 39 other guys right behind him have come through and worked it in pretty good. So that next lap, the berms and some of that mud will be pushed out of the way. The track will be a lot faster. Ricky Carmichael is our leader. And he's not really getting a challenge right now. Can he hold on? Once he's won the first moto, he's swept the events this year. Although the GSX-R750 just won back-to-back -back AMA Supersport Championships, and the GSX-R600 had the most AMA 600 Supersport victories, we weren't satisfied. We made over 20 major improvements to the 600 and gave the 750 electronic fuel injection. Now even its shadow can't keep up. The GSX-R600 and the GSX-R750 from Suzuki. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a bow flex. You're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a bow flex machine. You're not going to believe how effective Bowflex is the first time you get on it. Bowflex may look a little different, but that's because we designed it to function correctly. Bowflex uses power rod resistance. Bowflex power rods are so effective that Bowflex guarantees results in six weeks or your money back. Try going to the gym and getting a guarantee on results. You won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. Now is the time to train for the career you've always wanted. Just ask Motorcycle Mechanics Institute graduate Al Luddington. Now lead mechanic for Honda's championship winning Smoke and Joe's Superbike team. MMI gave me the knowledge and training to take me to the top of my profession. It's a great place to start, and I recommend it to anybody looking to kick off a career in motorcycle mechanics or the personal watercraft industry. Change your life with one phone call. 1-800-994-3664. That's 1-800-994-3664. Call today. AMA National Motocross is being brought to you by Honda, maker of the world's most powerful custom motorcycle, the Valkyrie. And by the new line of Mazda B-Series trucks. Mazda, get in, be moved. 125 action opening moto. Ricky Carmichael from Buchanan, Michigan is our leader. But Mike Brown of Honda of Troy, coming off one of his finest hours of racing at Bud's Creek in the last race, got by Casey Johnson. So number 100 on the red bike is now in second place. Parolio moves up to third. Jason McCormick, one of his finest performances. But look at that. David Bailey, John Dowd in fifth place. What he has right here, Art, is the points leads in jeopardy. Carmichael's gone. We're going to put the Suzuki stopwatch on him and get the difference. Now four seconds back to Mike Brown. They're already pulling away from the pack. Now, Dow typically rides a little slower in the beginning of the race. He comes on strong at the end, but if you give Carmichael that big of a lead, forget it. He's going to need a 250 to catch back up. 14 seconds in back of the leader is John Dow. He's got a lot of time, though, but he's got Parolio 41. And he's got McCormick 32 in front of him. And they, they might not be that easy to get around if they run as a pack like that. Now, these are kids. They want to win bad. Dow's already won a championship in the 125 Supercross. He won this race last year. These guys are hungry for a win. They're going to do whatever it takes to pass what a lot of people are starting to call that old man. Both those riders have had really sorry times of it uh, earlier in the season. Perolio. 19th in the second race, no points again in the third, 22nd in the fourth, 17th at Bud's Creek. And McCormick has had some crash problems this year. I don't think Dowd's concerned with passing these guys back, getting around them, working his way up into second place. He's got so much more experience. I mean, with that age comes a lot of knowledge of how to get around a motocross track fast, how to win a championship. The problem is the guy he's dicing with for the title is Carmichael, and he can't even see him anymore. McCormick making the move. So McCormick gets by Parolio, and now Dowd has to uh, deal with Parolio. Oh, McCormick, his best finish this year overall was a 13th. He's looking 
terrific right now. Here comes Dowdy. Dowdy making the move on Perolio. And Perolio fighting back, but John Dowd now moves up one notch with McCormick in front of him. Dowd yeah, just had a much better angle. They're going through a new section right here. They've taken out that corkscrew downhill, and they lead him right into this big plateau out to the front with a little bit more speed. Opened up the passing lanes a little bit more. So on our leaderboard is Carmichael Brown. McCormick Dowd moving up to fourth with Perolio rounding out the top five. Dowdy looking to the inside against McCormick, who's going to the outside line. Just trying to take a different line, stay out of that roost. Also keep McCormick guessing a little bit. When you get somebody catching you from behind, you see them on the inside, you can hear them over on the outside, and start changing your race a little bit to counter what they're doing, and that always plays into the favor of the guy behind. Dowd seems to be taking the opposite line every time. As he chases down McCormick, let's go down to Davey Combs. Brian looks like the same thing for John. He didn't get off the gate with Ricky. How can he change that in the second photo? Uh, well, he actually got a kind of a lousy jump that time, so he's got to work on his jump. Uh, right now, he was fourth trying to pass Casey Johnson. I guess they came together down there, so that's why he's a little farther back right now. But um, we'll change some things for the next photo. How are our lap times right now compared to Carmichael? Is he right with them? Uh, it's a little bit off the pace right now, but the last few laps have been right behind McCormick, so we haven't had a free lap yet to, to figure it out. Thanks, Brian. So David Bailey, uh, Brian Berry, answering one question for us. What happened to John Dowd and also Casey Johnson? Uh, which was out of our view. So Dowdy going after McCormick right now. You can see John is very aggressive. He's trying everything he can. You can tell from his body English, he's not holding back at all. He knows this is important. He's got to get up there and run with Carmichael. At least try to get somewhere in Carmichael's rearview mirror and make him nervous a little bit. Hopefully just pray for a mistake before this is over with. He's got to come back in the second moto and beat him to maintain that point. Lead. Dowd's timing looking a little better as the race goes on now. Looking like he feels more comfortable. Once again, not following. And the lap times are a little bit off the pace. It's easy to understand the way Brian pointed out. He's been behind McCormick and has choose a different line or a slower line everywhere. When will Dowd make his move? We'll find out in a moment. Once you get connected, you'll wonder how you live without it. And the best way to get connected is through East Coast Communications. Paging and cellular service makes everything easier and convenient. And with cellular service from Bell Atlantic Mobile, you're getting the best. East Coast Communications carries the top lines of pagers and cellular phones. Sign up for a one-year subscription before July 31st, and you will automatically receive triple your monthly airtime allowance and unlimited local weekend airtime through December. For safety, ease, and convenience, East Coast Communications is your local source to get connected. RPM tonight, Monday through Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 12 and 8, only on ESPN2. Welcome back to Red Bud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan. This is the battle in the 125's first moto for third place. John Dowd, number nine, to the inside on Jason McCormick, number 32. Looks like McCormick didn't really have an answer for that. He came in on the outside, couldn't hold it tight. Just had to give it up. And I'll tell you what, in the back of my mind, uh, as a privateer, in McCormick's position, I'd have been thinking, oh, you know, third ain't bad. I can't hold up the pressure Dowd's putting on me, so I'll just try to learn from him. Kind of what it looked like to me. You can see him getting a little fishtail on the outside. Dow with a great line up the inside. McCormick in his first year ride with the FMF, the support on the team. Really trying to impress after a very poor start of the motocross season. He's got six more races after this one to prove he belongs with that support team. 
Well, you kind of work your way up the ladder in small increments. You know, if you try to bite off more than you can chew, you end up not finishing at all or finishing out of the top 20 by crashing and riding over your head. And right here, Dowd's putting a lot of pressure on him, caught him quick. He's figuring, I'm just going out on a limb here and figuring maybe he's just being a little bit more conservative here and trying to make sure he gets a good top five finish and improve on that. We saw Casey Johnson on the pro circuit. Kawasaki just barely get into our picture. He's fighting back after that earlier collision and dropping back, but out in front, Ricky Carmichael after flirting a little bit with Mike Brown in second place. He's just taken away from it. Once he finds his groove, forget it. He's been the fastest guy on the racetrack for the past couple of years. And it looks like he's found that pace once again. It, like I said, the first couple of laps, they watered the track so much in spots to keep the dust down that he had to be a little bit more conservative and make sure he didn't go down in some spot where it was very slick. This corner right here was just a ice skating rink that first lap. As soon as he started feeling more comfortable, Brown couldn't keep up. Casey Johnson starts to attack Jason McCormick now. Johnson third in the points. Is looking to take over fourth place. Johnson cutting it hard to the inside. McCormick out of the Pacific Northwest looks back at Casey from California. Says, hey, wait a minute. I don't want to give it away that easy. <laughs> Casey has been riding good. Had to give him a little confidence in Bud's Creek to get up there and run up front with his teammate for a little while. If they hadn't been for a little crash in second moto, he'd have had a much better finish. But starting to ride much better in the outdoors. You can see the confidence. He has fourth place overall finishes in three of the last four events. And you said take it a bit at a time. Casey would love to move it up to that third spot, I'm sure. Well, I think he's feeling like he's in the driver's seat right now. Long ways up to the next position, but I think he knows that he was able to catch McCormick pretty quickly and keep the pressure on him, and that's just going to eventually wear him out. Casey Johnson especially looking good after having such a severe injury that happened during practice on Thanksgiving Day during the Supercross season. Casey Johnson has come back. Casey Johnson to the inside on McCormick. Takes over another spot. He's got a ways to go before catching Dowd. Well, it may be a distant fourth right now, but after having those problems with Dowd and those guys getting together, he's worked his way back up to the spot. And although it's pretty far behind, he's got to look at his lap times between motos and know that other than Carmichael way out in front, his lap times are pretty compatible with those of Dowd and Brown. Focus on that second moto. Try not to make that mistake early on. Out in front, Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael did not win this event last year. Kevin Windham came through. It was a neat little story, wasn't it, David? Found a necklace. Seemed to be giving him a lot of luck and been wearing it ever since. We'll see Kevin Windham coming up in the uh, 250s a little bit later on. But right now, this is photo number one of the 125s from Redbud Track and Trail. In second place, number 100, Honda of Troy, Mike Brown. Brown has just been running excellent lately. In second place. Brown looking smooth. He's got it all together. And let's go down to the mechanics area to Davey Coombs. Dean, I know it's early today, but Mike seems to be on a hot streak. This is the third time in a row we've seen him right up front. What changed in him the last couple weeks? Uh, mainly, uh, you know, he's just been more focused, I think, since, uh, since uh, Mount Morris. We had some bad luck at Southwick, but uh, that wasn't really his fault. And uh, I think he's been concentrating a lot on starts, and that makes, uh, uh, you know, keeping up with Carmichael a lot easier. He's not so much uh, concerned with Carmichael's speed. It's just being relaxed, being up front. It's, you just got to get used to that. Michael Brown, obviously in tremendous physical shape, is now putting that conditioning on the track resulting in fine finishes. I'll never forget back in Washougal, Washington. Well, here it is. We flash back to the race in Washougal, which was his very first AMA national win. But that wasn't the only event of the day. His mechanic, Jeff Nutter, a longtime veteran in the motocross scene, lost a bet to Mike Brown. And Mike was able to, uh, as you see, eliminate all facial hair on Jeff Nutter. Many have never seen Jeff Nutter <laughs> without his beard. A fun time had by all in the most unusual victory celebration. Mike Brown, his first season after coming back from Europe in the GP rounds last year, 
Of course, your motos are a lot longer over in Europe, David. Well, Mike talked about uh, when he came back and raced that 125 National in Unadilla, how the motos here were like, you know, a yawner. It just went by so quick. Fitness has never been a problem for him. He's in excellent physical shape. You just mentioned Unadilla. That's coming up next on our future schedule. You race. You got tools. You race. You got a lot of tools. You race. You gotta have a place to put those tools. Now when you buy a new 1998 Honda CR125R or CR250R, you'll get a 12-drawer Craftsman Professional Tool Chest worth $600. You race. Honda and Craftsman help you win. Discover the amazing hitting secrets of America's finest baseball school in Teaching the Mechanics of the Major League Swing 2. Tommy Mansky's powerful teaching video that features the same revolutionary techniques that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches have been simply amazed at their students' rapid week-by-week -week improvement. These award-winning techniques benefit players of all ages and ability levels and make a valuable addition to any coach's library and a great gift. At just $29.95, call now. Some called it the fight of the year. Carl Thompson beat Chris Eubank for the WBO Junior Heavyweight Championship. Now they meet again. Tune in today at 5 for the rematch. Live from Sheffield, England. Only on ESPN2. AMA Motocross is being brought to you by Motorcycle Mechanics Institute. Quality training for the motorcycle industry. A sunbaked crowd here in Buchanan, Michigan. Red Bud Track and Trail. Ricky Carmichael, a big lead out in front in our first 125 moto. You saw Mike Brown go by in second place. John Dowd, who coming into this race had only a one-point lead in the points race, will lose that unless something drastic happens. They're all very spread out right now. Dowd is on a... Riding a fast pace, so is Brown, but Carmichael just put it out of reach in those first five, ten minutes. Right now, I bet you they're selling a lot of T-shirts because it doesn't look like anything's going to happen up front. <laughs> and for the looks of the crowd, some people need T-shirts. <laughs> they're getting a little sunburned out there. John Dowd in third place, though Wood set himself up with a good position overall by holding on to third. Question now is, could he? Does he have time to catch? Mike Brown in second place. Every point's going to matter, especially coming down to a championship series. Getting around Brown, this moto could make the difference at the end of the year. Also set him up for an overall position today. If he can get that second moto win, he'd get the overall over Carmichael should he finish second to him. Jason McCormick, number 32, on his way to his best moto finish of the season in fifth place. This is Perolio, number 41. These guys got a great battle going on. Way off the pace. Still, these guys are locked in a battle amongst themselves. Perolio leading that freight train. These guys heading up to the ski jump. First time I ever came to Red Bud and saw that. It's pretty exciting. It's one of the only ones of the season. Actually, there's one kind of like it in Washougal, but this one's a little bit bigger drop. It's Pretty interesting, too, because it's right off the start. You're still all bunched up, and the ground just falls away from you. Those guys are flying about 85, 90 feet down that hill. Number 35 is Nathan Ramsey on the chase. And then number 36 is Brock Sellers. All behind number 41, the Parolio. 14, Scott Sheik. Whenever I got a bad start and I see a big pack of riders like this, I'd start to get excited. I knew if I played my cards right and worked my way through and pick up four or five positions, a lot better moto finish if you can get around all those guys. Sheik needs something. He Boy, needs he to really get his does, confidence he? going. Yeah, yeah, he does. You thought maybe that third place in Southwick with a four or five finish might have uh, motivated him to uh, step up a notch or two, but then he came back with a 13th and a 19th place moto at Bud's Creek. 
Well, he picked up one spot there in that, this new section. That's very technical. They come down, they got a drill off camber, then they ride up over the top of the, uh, up under the grass section. They left that alone pretty natural like they would in Europe. Didn't disc it up and groom it. Just run the banners through there and say, this is where you're going to go. You figure it out. Well, look at the roost as they hit those tight corners. They feel that Scott Sheik is riding his way back into physical shape, but what they're really worried about is his mental condition. He doesn't uh, approach the track as aggressive as he used to. And it's understandable when you get a severe injury like an Achilles heel. Well, he just did a little dance right there, come out of this corner. This is what happens when you're a little bit out of sync. Whoa! Did a good job to save it, but he's just not riding to the same uh, level that he was, obviously, before he got hurt, and it's tough to get that back. And even if you didn't have an injury, Art, you stopped riding for a while and tried to come back, you'd find out it's very tough. Look at what happened to Damon Bradshaw. He tried to come back, and it took everything he had to try to win a national. And in, in doing so, he even had some people saying, well, yeah, that's just because it was muddy. It's very difficult to get that rhythm back, and he's out there trying. FMF's giving him a shot at it. Right here, he's got an opportunity to work his way into seventh before the moto's in, so... Start's going to play a big role. I haven't seen him up front in the beginning, and that really hurts, especially in the 125 class. It's almost impossible to make up that much time with a bad start. Nathan Ramsey on the Kawasaki show and a wheel to Perolio on the Suzuki. That's Ramsey, number 35, as they come over the big jump. And they start to spread out just a little bit after Ramsey's move. It's a, the fastest straightaway into the biggest, fastest sweeper on the course. Then down this hill, file into those sharp corners. Those berms get so deep, you start to drag the foot pegs, the brake. These guys will run through there and pick up a big pack of mud into the shift lever and the brake pedal, and you got to kick that out. That's when they ride the front wheel a little bit high on the berm and try to get more clearance from the center of the engine cases and the brake pedal. Oh, Mike Brown went down. You saw him skidding, getting back onto the track. Mike Brown, second place, is now back in third. So that was the break that John Dowd was looking for as far as enough time to catch second place. Mike Brown helped him out, and we're now on the white flag lap, final lap. This guy could crawl around the track and still win the moto. Ricky Carmichael, what a great job he's done. Looks back to make double sure that his competition isn't coming up on him. And now you look for his favorite fans. <laughs> well, he's coming up to the fans' favorite jump out here, that big ski jump. He's still so clean, he can use the same clothes the next moto. Ricky Carmichael, who swept the opener at Glen Helen, he swept Mount Morris, and took Bud's Creek with a 1-1 as well. The only moto win he's had in a non-sweep performance this year was the second one of the year at Hangtown Classic when he got an eighth place in the first moto, came back to win the second for a third overall. That was still a spectacular result in both motos there because he took that tumble right off the start in that first moto, got up, and he was way off the pace. And Still worked the, uh, his way all the way up. The total frustration, too, we David, of Southwick six minutes, six minutes. and the mechanical in the in first the moto, moto coming back for a second place in the second moto. It's a good team, though, he and Chad. They realize what it takes to win the championship, and they're not going to let that get the best of him. And already he's back in a position where at the end of this moto, if things stay the way they are, he'll already have the points lead again. So they probably figure they've gotten their bad luck out of the way, and it's going to be easy street from here on out. Dowd in second place if Carmichael holds on to this victory then as he tries to make his way through those deep ruts that David was just talking about. He will have a two-point lead in the points race. He keeps looking over to see where the second place is. Probably anxious to see if it's Dowd or still Mike Brown. I'd be a little disappointed to see that Brown made a mistake and Dowd has now inherited that spot. That'll be only a three-point game instead of a five-point game. Ricky Carmichael with once a double-digit lead as far as seconds ahead of second place. Probably will win this uh, by eight or nine seconds uh, after cruising. The fans, of course, really appreciative of this young man's effort. The checkers for Ricky Carmichael 
his eighth moto win in 11 tries. And look at the distance. We go back to John Dowd. Right there, coming across in second place, Mike Brown nailing down a third, so he's still riding well. Johnson in fourth, and McCormick rounding out the top five. Davey Coombs making his way over now. Let's go down to him. All right, Rick, congratulations. First medal win here at Red Bud, and you got the points lead back. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I got a good start and uh, was able to get by my teammate, Casey Johnson, pretty fast and uh, pulled out a good ride. It felt good. Uh, make a few adjustments before the second moto, and I should be all right. How'd you like the track? It looked like it was a lot drier than it was in practice. Uh, yeah, it's a lot drier. It's, uh, I don't know, a little wet in some spots, a little ruddy, but uh, it's good. Right. How do you feel for the second moto? you feel like you got your condition up? Oh, yeah, I'm ready to go. It's not hot. Actually, it's a good day out, so I'll be ready to go. All right, congratulations, Ray. Thank you, Davey. RC, a phenomenal performance. It looks like he's got the conditioning to go two more motos here today, David Bailey, as we go back down to Davey. John, the moto didn't start your way, but uh, got a little gift there at the end. Yeah, that was a little bit of a gift by Mike, uh, but I'll, hey, what a I'll take it. I almost went down myself a few times. Actually, I did go down in the beginning of the race. Uh, I didn't get too great of a start, and uh, I got together with uh, Casey Johnson early in the race, and you know that's actually, I think, how I got so far behind them guys in the first place. But uh, I don't know, I didn't get hurt. You know, everything's good, the bike's running good, so I'm looking forward to the second moto. I know it's really in the season. We talk about this a lot, but uh, you don't have the points today anymore. Carmichael's back in charge. Does that change your strategy for the second moto? No, not at all. I mean, I, I'm not paying attention to the points really at all at this point. It's just too early for me in the season, and uh, I'm just going race for race. Uh, we'll let you get ready for the next race. Thanks a lot. Mike Brown continuing his uh, good run, but right there in the final two laps of the race going down, giving Dowdy the chance for a second. Moto 2, coming up next for our 125s. Suzuki has completely restyled the Katana 600 and 750. From their dual halogen headlights to their 4 into 1 stainless steel exhausts. Same time tomorrow? Yeah. So now they're just as impressive on the outside as they've always been on the inside. Hi, Chuck. How's business? Okay. Hey, what's on your screen? QuickBooks accounting software from the makers of Quicken. Yeah, I really don't have time to learn new software. If you can write a check, you can use QuickBooks. Answer a few questions and it tailors itself to your business. Create invoices like these. It has accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll and inventory, and over 60 customizable reports that put you in control. I'm going to try it. Nothing to lose. Call 1-800-652-0101. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Season begins September 6. The 125 points battle goes back and forth with each moto now. John Dowd trailing Carmichael in the points race as we get set for moto number two here at Red Bud. Who will get the whole shot? Whoa, Robbie Skaggs. Robbie Skaggs gets the whole shot. But Carmichael and Dowd both with good starts. It's always been a scary start for me, Art, because you got the guys coming from the inside and the outside. The guys in the middle get pinched. That time they all got through there clean. Now you can see the conditions of the track. That's why they watered it so much to try to alleviate that dust. But inevitably that dust rises to the surface by the second moto every year. Skaggs number 45 in the lead with John Dowd in second place. Carmichael is currently in fourth. Tried the inside but didn't make a move that time. Would it benefit Dow to get out that lead as quick as possible, David? Yes, absolutely. Especially if he can put Skaggs in there between himself and Carmichael. A few other riders try to do the same thing Carmichael did to him the first moto. Just disappear. Let him deal with all those guys. One of those guys you could end up getting tangled with and go down. Same thing happened to John. So it's Skaggs in first. John Dowd in second. Dowd looking very aggressive. Brown in third with Carmichael to the outside in fourth. Here goes John Dowd to the outside. Skaggs to the inside. Dowdy now in front. He's got the lead. 
He means business here in the second moto. Can he retake the points lead before this race is over? Where it sits right now, it would be close. He may have it, but Carmichael is going to work his way through the pack the same way John did the first moto. What this will really be is a psychological battle between himself and Carmichael leading into the events to come. Who can win this battle? Anything can happen there, too, with Mike Brown and Carmichael, but Carmichael uh, easily getting a, a route past him. Right around the outside. I don't think Brown expected him to take that line. Here's our Suzuki leaderboard. Jason McCormick once again in the top five. Brownie not wanting to give up. They're trying to get around Skaggs, number 45. Carmichael still in third. Brown testing him at every juncture. Our leader, John Dowd. Carmichael. In second now, gets through the pack. Skaggs number 45 in third. And it's Michael Brown now in fourth. Focus ahead, Mike Brown. Everybody's saying look up. <laughs> I don't think anybody in that first lap even looks over there. There's so much going on, especially for Skaggs. I mean, he went from first to fourth real quick. So now he's getting a real dose of what it, how intense it is out front. It's be exciting for him to be able to hang with these guys for a while, but trying to stay ahead of them, obviously too tough. His best finish of a moto this year was a 10th place finish. And look at Carmichael already just right on the back door of Dowd. Dowd's figuring, well, I'll just get out into the lead, put all these guys between myself and Carmichael. He steals a glance coming out of a tight corner, and there's Carmichael right there already. So he knows this is going to be a fight. Great jump into that tight turn. These guys get a lot of air time. Look at the line by Carmichael. Oh, Carmichael. Chops off about 30 feet of racetrack. Doesn't have to be as aggressive. Just cuts that line a little shorter. He actually made a pivot right in the beginning of that corner. If he was a little closer to Dow. That would have been a pass for sure. And Dow will make a note of that the next lap around. Carmichael's determination, David, reminds me of a, of a boxer who, whose corner might throw in a towel and he'll just kick it right out of the ring. I mean, this guy thinks of, whoa, he's a little off balance on the off camber there. And look at him, though, through that corner. Just makes it all back up. Anytime he makes a little mistake, loses some time, keep your eyes on him because he's going to do something amazing and try to make it all back up. And you're right. He just he never gives up. I mean, he lost the points lead. He had some bad luck. Especially the way that uh, Hangtown went. He was in the hospital moments before the start of the first moto, and he comes out over the bars. And I've seen a lot of guys just call it a day, or at least call it a moto after something like that. He comes back to an eighth, wins the second moto, and then he's mad at himself he didn't get the overall. So <laughs> I, I think that says something about his determination. And it's even interesting riding home with him on a plane because he never stops thinking about the race. The other thing, too, is that this is new for him. Carmichael to the outside. Can he hold on to the lead against John Dowd? Dowd, he tries to cut inside. No bar to bar this time. Carmichael, smooth move. That was pretty slick. That's where he passed Brown. Same spot. Aggressive, not wanting to wait. Give Dowd any confidence at all. This is the, the line he used on the outside. Dowd was in the main line, figuring, okay, I've got my bases covered, and Carmichael rides right around him on the outside, and then was careful in that next corner not to let Dowd have an opportunity to cut back underneath him. So, a great move, and as I started to point out, Carmichael's young. This is all pretty new for him versus Dowd. Been around the circuit for quite a while, and any guy that just burst onto the scene is going to uh, show you a little bit more of that hunger than you'll see from some of the guys that have been around there for a long time. So it only took six minutes into the race for RC to take the lead away from John Dowd. We'll be right back. It's the biggest motorcycle engine on the planet. Six cylinders. Six carbs. 1,520 cc's. Only one custom motorcycle in the world can cruise like this. The Valkyrie from Honda. Country values. Work hard. Live right. Honor your commitments. 
That's Randy and Colleen, and that's partly why they have a Country Music Platinum Visa from First USA. But there's another reason. Sure, that 3.9% APR for six months is nice. So is the 12.99% APR thereafter. Plus, there's no annual fee and a high credit line up to $100,000. But there's another reason Randy and Colleen wanted a Country Music Platinum Visa. It's not just the country rewards you can build up and cash in for Western Apparel and more, or the discounts at select country music destinations and shows. There's another reason. And here it is, a free CD and video, Country's Great Love Songs, a limited edition CD, free with your first purchase or balance transfer, plus the songwriting in Nashville video. Even get your choice of four customized card designs. Apply for your Country Music Platinum Visa, the card with real country values. Deciding on a truck? Get into these facts. The Mazda B2500 SE boasts aggressive new styling. The Nissan Frontier is, well, nice. The Mazda B2500 comes generously equipped with all these features for hundreds less than the Frontier. So, given these facts, we're pretty sure where you'll land. Right now, get 1500 cash back or 0.9% APR financing. The new Mazda B2500 SE. Rejoining the action of photo number two in the 125s from Red Bud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan. All right, Ekman along with David Bailey and Davey Combs. We take a look at a pretty tight group right now for the top three. Ricky Carmichael trying to pull away in the lead from John Dowd and Michael Brown in third. And, of course, this was the exact finishing order of photo number one when Mike Brown went down with less than a lap and a half to go to give John Dowd second place. Let's go down to Davy Coombs, who's checking in now with Dean Baker, Michael Brown's mechanic. Davy. Dean, we're watching Mike Brown in third right now, but hey, how disappointed was he about that slip in the first motor? Yeah, he said he was going to try and pick it up the last two laps. Uh, he felt Dowd getting a little close and made him a small mistake, uh, so we ended up getting third. Hopefully, uh, we won't make the same mistake, and uh, right now, Dowd's in front of us, so we're trying to pressure him. The roll's completely reversed. Anytime you got a little pressure on you, you start to ride a little bit different. And if I don't think Dowd's too worried about Brown at this point in the race. But in a couple more laps, if Brown's still there, taking the inside and the outside, keeping that pressure on, Dowd will worry a lot less about Carmichael and more about Brown. You're right, though, David Bailey. Right now, he's, he's focused ahead because Ricky Carmichael is turning much faster laps, and he's starting to edge away from the two of them. And if I was in Dowd's situation right now, I, I don't care about this guy behind me. I'm just trying to stay with Carmichael, learn as much as I can from his lines. Hopefully I dust, all that dust doesn't settle by the time I get there, and I can learn something and try to hang with him. Keep the pressure on till the end when you get into lap riders. But, well, that's going to be tough to do because Carmichael is on today. Whoa, are these guys close? Casey Johnson makes the pass on McCormick. McCormick in the top five, trying to hold on to that top five position like he did in the first moto, but Casey Johnson just would not let it happen. Starting to look like his teammate, Carmichael, just wide open. He actually had to duck his elbow down a little bit to still make that pass and get back in front of him before that big tree came along on the right side of the track. But Carmichael, Dowd, Brown, Johnson, and McCormick on our Suzuki leaderboard. All right, I'm starting to see a lot more aggression. Some more signs of Ricky Carmichael in Casey Johnson out there on the racetrack. And anytime you got a guy on your team like Carmichael getting all that attention, winning, dominating the way he has, it starts to rub off a little bit. What happened in 83 when Bob Hanna signed on with Honda? What happened to David Bailey then? Well, it, it happened to me. It happened to everybody. The intensity of the team went up because Bob was so determined. And you could see that the kind of training he was doing and the, how fast he was going during testing. And you get into those lap time wars, and all of a sudden our lap times were dropping off like three seconds instead of one second because Bob was going so fast. And I ended up winning everything that year. Bob got hurt, fortunately for me, and I was able to win. But I had picked my intensity up so far that uh, besides Bob behind us, there wasn't anybody who pushed it that far. And especially when the old man, Bob Hanna, comes and wins five out of the first six events. Of course, you won Gatorback. Jimmy Button, DNF. We're about halfway through the race. Chaparral Yamaha button, he's coasting home. You can tell by the looks of his number plate and his jersey, he didn't get the best start, so the day hasn't gone good. There's Larry Brooks. Team manager coming over to check things out. 
Jimmy Button with more hard luck on this motocross season. He's After put in it. some good rides here and there. But yeah, he really has. Sixth place in the first moto. But it was like a little Bud's Creek. A second in the first moto and 20th in the second moto. Well, that seems to only work for Carmichael because he's got so many moto wins. He can still manage to hold on to that points lead. This is disappointing, though. You put a lot of effort into the race. You work your tail off, and you get about midway through, or even towards the end, then your bike lets go. You're like, why didn't you do that in the first lap? <laughs> Wouldn't have to come this far. <laughs> Brown, still aggressive. You can tell. Look at his posture, Art. Leaning forward, he's got his elbows bent. I mean, he just looks like he's charging into the first turn. He's still got that aggression in his body English. That's why he's been riding good lately. Excellent physical shape. You know, I think he enjoys training as much as Carmichael does. And these guys actually look forward to uh, a week off where they can do a lot of training, ride their mountain bikes, do a lot of running. And if you see Mike Brown, he's, each time I see him, he's more lean, a lot stronger. You see every muscle in his body because his diet's pretty good, too. It'll be interesting to see what happens to Mike Brown when Honda of Troy becomes Yamaha of Troy next year. That's the rumor out there, and that they'll only field a 125 team. So might Mike Brown stay with the 125s in the National Outdoors and stay with that team? I think if he keeps riding the way he is, his options are going to look good. If you got guys on the FMF team like Scott Sheik who haven't produced, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of places open for somebody that's capable of running the top three. There you see Nathan Ramsey, number 35, and this is Ron Conda, number 18. McCormick is number 32. So once again, David Bailey, we have very familiar names battling for sixth, seventh, and eighth places as McCormick now in sixth position, number 32. The riders of this caliber, not quite up to the par right now of uh, Carmichael and Dowd. So deep. One little mistake and caution, in fact, right Whoa. there. Ramsey trying to take a little different line to get around McCormick gets passed. So Roncato seems to be the guy on the move right now. A little frustrated after that first turn crash, trying to salvage the day. Smart move by Roncato, taking advantage of Ramsey, trying to set himself up on McCormick. So now let's see what Roncato can do with McCormick. Here's the battle for six, goes to the inside, shows the wheel. FMF versus Honda of Troy right here. Good, smart inside move by Roncato. Can he hold it? Far to far off the jump. Roncata with the edge. Who breaks the latest now? Well, it's just smart by Roncata to square those corners off. Saving a lot of footage of racetrack around the inside there again. Boy, just as you were saying it, that's exactly what he did, David. Here comes Nathan Ramsey in on McCormick. Ramsey, not as delicate and with less finesse than Roncata, but he gets by him. So the battle continues here in our second photo. We'll be right back. Shooters Cafe and Sports Bar, the area's only sports bar, is under new ownership and becoming the area's choice for socializing and unwinding. Catch the game on our 100-inch TV, the largest in the area. Play around the pool or treat yourself to a premium cigar. Get four hours of free pool with any $6 food purchase on Sundays. Don't miss Shooters Live Music every Friday and Saturday night or Ladies Night on Wednesday. Enjoy the friendly atmosphere at Shooters Cafe and Sports Bar, the people's choice. Shooters is open seven days a week and located next to the DMV and Prosperity Shopping Center. Jerry Chevrolet Oldsmobile Sales and Service Team works hard to please their customers, and it shows. Thank you so much for your patience, time, and all the fine things you did for me. And honestly, thank you for calling. My mother is thinking of buying a car there. It was the best car buying experience I've ever had. The service was just fantastic. Everything was done quickly and nicely. Thank you for checking. Jerry's award-winning sales and service team says, let the competition beware. Cool, like Earl the Pearl, shaking and baking. Mark Fitrich, <laughs> Bobby Orr, Joe Lewis, old school. Left. Old school is Paul Bear Bryant. Mini Escudillo. Like Pistol Pete. Illy Funkster socks. Black socks. Short shorts. Definitely old school. Old school like me. Julius Irvin. Dr. J. Running down in like in the 70s with a big, big afro. afro. Got it going on. I can play basketball with anybody. Now that's old school. Welcome back in our second photo now as we take a look at number nine on the team Yamaha. John Dowd in second place. 
and he just has tried his best but cannot hold on to Ricky Carmichael out in front. No, he's still trying. You never know. Carmichael's been known to drop it towards the later stages of the race, and his concentration starts to weaken a tad because he knows there's only a couple laps to go, and Dowd's trying to stay as close as he can just in case. Ricky Carmichael, John Dowd, and Mike Brown. That's exactly the order of finish as we see the white flag go out for Ricky Carmichael weeding his way through the lappers right now. If Carmichael should win this second moto, it would be his 11th career motocross victory. That would tie him for seventh place with Jeff Ward on the all-time 125 motocross win list. That's amazing already, too. This, this early in his career, to be uh, up there in the names, passing up guys like Johnny O'Mara, Mickey Diamond, Jeff Ward, guys who, especially Jeff Ward, he's, he rode the 125 class forever. For a long time. Yeah, and it was and had a lot of success there. And of course, the king of 125s, Mark Barnett, who made it especially, he had uh, 25 wins, and uh, I, we'll never see Carmichael on a 125 that long. I don't know. It, he will have to ride this thing forever to try to equal that. That just shows how dominant Barnett was. I mean, a lot of wins uh, could have come to Jeff Ward had he not been having to race against Mark Barnett. As a matter of fact, the first time I ever raced against Mark Barnett was here at this track. And I'd been hearing about how he was going to smoke me, and I was like, well, whatever, you know, we'll see Sunday. And, man, I got the whole shot. He came by me in the second turn, and that was that. The guy was just unbelievable right from the start. Here's Casey Johnson currently in fourth place. Casey with a good ride today. This would be for him a 4-4 and a fourth place overall, including that whole shot he got in the, in the first photo. But the man of the hour is the defending champion of the series, Ricky Carmichael with the number one plate. He'll come away from this race happy. He little, steals a little glance at Dowd coming the other way into the corner. Knows all he's got to do is keep it upright. Only about four or five more corners to go, and he'll leave here with the points lead and another win. Kid's Boy, on a roll. In two years, he has 12 Supercross wins, and this would be his 11th motocross win in only two seasons. Guys are having trouble jumping that little plateau that he just styled it off of with one hand, you know? That's where his confidence is, just soaring. Looking for his ninth photo win and his fourth sweep of the year, Ricky Carmichael, once again, the checkered flag. His good friend Johnny O'Mara with his uh, hands in the air, Chad Watts, his mechanic, as John Dowd comes across the finish line in second place. Our next telecast coming to you on August 1st from that famous Unadilla track. We'll be back with the 125 winners after this. Never before has there been a cruiser as comfortable as the Suzuki Intruder 1500 LC. A bike so smooth, so impressive, you'll want the end of the ride to be just the beginning. Discover the amazing hitting secrets of America's finest baseball school in Teaching the Mechanics of the Major League Swing 2. Tommy Mansky's powerful teaching video that features the same revolutionary techniques that have produced baseball world's back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU national championship teams. Parents, players, and coaches have been simply amazed at their students' rapid week-by-week -week improvement. These award-winning techniques benefit players of all ages and ability levels and make a valuable addition to any coach's library and a great gift. At just $29.95, call now. Come on, this is nothing. This is nothing. Imagine go. you're in a spinning class for 10 hours a day, 21 days in a row, with the world's most insane instructor. Let's go. Let's go. And then you might, just might, begin to feel what it's like to be a participant in this event. The 1998 Tour de France. You gotta get more. You gotta get more. Coverage continues tonight on ESPN2. So Ricky Carmichael, his fourth win, all of them, one one sweeps on the year. John Dowd in second place overall, and of course a well-deserved third for Mike Brown. Let's go down to Davey now with Ricky. Hi, right, Rick, business as usual, just like Bud's Creek. Two good starts, two moto wins. Uh, yeah, I got good starts, and uh, I'll tell you what, with 
Kawasaki Bridgestone Tires Pro Circuit. I pulled through and uh, I feel good. I, I mean, I'm back in the points lead and uh, just got to maintain it from here. Yeah. Like you said, you got the points lead back. John Dow's right with you in both motos. How do you feel going into the Summer Nationals now? I feel good, you know. I'm in, I'm in a lot better shape this year than it was last year. My bike's handling a lot better, so I'll tell you what, man. I felt good today, especially that that last moto. I was putting in some good lap times, and uh, I felt great. He asked your mechanic, Chad, if you might try LaRocco's leap there toward the end. He said, you know what? He ain't 17 this year. He's 18. Do you feel like you've come a long way since last year? Oh, yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, it takes consistency to win a championship, and uh, that's what I got to do. All right, well, congratulations to you and Chad Watts. Thank you, Davey. As we take a look at the overall, Ricky 1-1, one, one, Dowd 2-2, two, two, Brown 3-3, three, three, Johnson 4-4. Four, four. Let's go back to Davey. John, a couple solid motors here at Red Bud, but Carmichael just had a little more today. Yeah, he was he was fast today. You know, he rode good. It's uh, I uh, The first motor didn't go quite the way I wanted to, but uh, he just flat out beat me in the second one, and I guess, uh, you know, that's the way it goes here today. He was, he was riding good, so... Hopefully uh, next week I can come back at him. Yeah. Now you came in with a one-point lead, but you know as it stands, you're going away. You're only four down. You still got to be happy about the championship. At least you're right there in contention. Yeah. You know I didn't know what to expect really coming into this year. I, I didn't even know if I would be you know anywhere near the front. So I guess uh, you know thinking back at the beginning of the season, I'm pretty happy to be still in, in the hunt. I mean anything can can happen still. I'm I'm still very close and. Uh, there's still uh, half a season left, you know, seven, six or seven races left. So I just keep trying and uh, hope for the best. Now next week you get to go back to Unadilla. That's got to be one of your favorite tracks on the circuit. Yeah, that's that's always been one of my favorite tracks. It's, a, it's usually pretty rough and, and bumpy and everything and uh, just uh, kind of a hometown crowd and everything. So I'm pretty excited, you know, for that race. Hopefully I can uh, do some, put in some good races there. So at the halfway mark of the 125 season, Carmichael recaptures the points, lead by five over Dowd. Brown and Button with a good battle going on for fourth. The 250s coming up next from Red Bud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan. Stay tuned. Line up every ATV Honda has ever built, and they would stretch from our factory in Ohio to the deserts of California. But in 28 years, we've never built one like this. The first ATV with ESP, push-button electric shift program, full digital display, and the most powerful engine we've ever put in an ATV. The Honda Foreman ES. We've just added something new to a very long line. Do you need a Visa credit card? If you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. This is a special opportunity to get an unsecured Visa credit card with no security deposit required, even if you've been turned on before and regardless of your past credit history. Almost everyone will be approved for this Visa credit card, so call now. Repeat, if you can say yes to these minimum requirements, we'll say yes to you. Say yes to this limited no-risk offer for an unsecured Visa credit card from Cross Country Bank. Call this toll-free number now. Hello, I'm Netboy, live from ESPN Sports Zone via XPG 46 Digital CompuCam. There's still time to pick your fantasy team for the Fantasy Football League if you hurry. Hey, Myers, that's my camera jack. You can't plug your electric razor in that? Come on! Welcome back to Red Bud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan, as we get set for the big guys, the 250s, round six of AMA Motocross. Here's the Mike LaRocco, his home track. They even have a jump named after LaRocco. It's a monster, I'll tell you that. As they start topping off the tanks, they've already gone through their practice uh, look-see laps, and they're getting ready now at the gate. You see Doug Henry coming off two straight wins. He has a 28-point lead in the points race, but as we go back to Bud's Creek, we get to the essence of today's first photo. We have asked before, does Ezra Lusk have a pain threshold? If he does, it's way off the chart. He broke his left arm in that first turn crash, and yet he is ready to go. He's at the line now, Davey. Thanks, guys. We're getting ready for the start of the 250 Moto here at Red Button. We actually have a surprise entry here. Now, Ezra Lusk broke his arm last week at Bud's Creek, but he's here today. Ezra, what are you doing to protect the arm? Uh, I got a pretty huge elbow pad on it right now, but uh, we we plated it and put screws in it, and you know it's strong. It's just it's uh, the bone is strong. It's just kind of weak. Are we going to see you try all the big jumps here? I mean, Larocco's leap has got to be the biggest jump on the circuit. No, no way. I didn't even look at it in practice. I'm not doing that. I'm going to do everything else, but uh, 
We're going to the far left on that jump. Okay. Well, what if you get the whole shot of the start here in the first moto? You're going to go for it? You're going to pull off? Oh, I'm. Oh, the lower reckless lead? No, I'm not even going to think about it. <laughs> but, you know, I think I can pick up my corner speed and all these straightaways and stuff, and hopefully 